Let's talk about physical pain. Last year, I went through the experience of having an infection in my intestines leading to a bowel obstruction. And for five hours long, I was in the most intense pain I had ever experienced in my entire life. I was just lost in complete misery and despair. And I was regretting ever having been born. After this experience passed, I was reflecting on it and I realized that the reason I suffered so much was probably not because of the physical pain in and of itself, but because of my fear around it. I want to outgrow this, but I'm not sure what approach I can take to achieve that. Perhaps practicing and staying in a meditative state during moments of physical discomfort? What would you suggest? Can you give me some very concrete and practical advice on how I can go about learning to deal better with this sort of intense and prolonged physical pain? First, your statement, uh, I suffered so much, was probably not because of the physical pain in and of itself, but because of my fear around it. That is possibly true, but not necessarily true. Fear, I mean, pain can just be debilitating. Pain can be such that you can't stand up. You have enough pain that you can't stand on your feet. You can have so much pain that you can't speak coherently or so much pain that you can't walk. Pain is pain tends to cripple you up. Your body tends to shut down. Your body tends to scrunch up when you have a lot of pain. So pain like that in your stomach, that band of a pain may not have been because you were, you know, you had fear around it. It could have just been the pain was that bad that your body was just kind of contracting into a ball and you weren't able to stand up, walk, sign your name, you know, speak. <laughs> you were just able to kind of huddle up in the fetal position and kind of stay there and suffer. That was about all you could do. Well, that's pain. You may not even been able to stretch out, like stretch out your limbs straight. They may have all kind of crump, you know, cramped up. Pain can do that. So pain can be completely debilitating. It's just the way your physical body responds to that much pain. So it may not have fear. Now, if you have a lot of fear about the pain, oh no, I'm going to die. You know, this is going to be terrible. Uh, you know, this pain is some awful thing. I've got a big cancer you know, blocking my intestine or something, and you have a lot of fear about what's going on, then that will make the pain that much worse. The fear will increase the pain. So it could be that the pain was as much as it was because of fear increasing it. Or it could be the pain was just a result of what was going on physically, and you just were all wadded up in a ball and couldn't do anything because the pain was just that much. Or it could be that the fear helped make the pain that much. Well, one of the things that you could do with it is that you could play with it. You could research it. If you ever have that kind of pain or discomfort, again, you should let the fear go. Say, okay, whatever this pain is, you know, I'll deal with it. And I'll deal with it in a positive way. Whether it's a great big cancer lump in my intestine, and that's the problem, and or whatever, and I'm only going to live for another three weeks. Well, if that's the case, then I'll deal with that. So think of the worst thing it could could possibly be, and accept it. So what's the worst case? Death in three weeks, and pain for all three weeks. You're going to be doubled over with pain for three weeks. Well, of course you won't be. They'll give you something that you know, they'll give you a narcotic or something that will make the pain lessen to the point that you can deal with, they can do that to the body too. They just tell the body to not pass pain signals along. And, you know, so you wouldn't have to do that, but you just like, think what's, what's the worst thing could happen Then make peace with that. Say, okay, if that happens, I'll deal with it. That'll be the way it is. And you accept that. Now see, after you accept it, what happened to the pain? Did it get any better? Did it lessen? Well, if it lessened, then it probably was your fear that was helping make the pain. If it doesn't lessen, but you feel that you really did accept that worst thing happening, you can see yourself just dealing with it and dealing with it in a positive way, then it probably had nothing to do with your fear. It was just the pain was hurting you. So 
I would say play with that. You don't have to have excruciating pain to play with that. You can play with that just with, with uh, you know, smaller pains. But I wouldn't intend going out and stabbing yourself or something so you could test, uh, you know, your response. But if you ever have pains again, now you have an awareness that you could experiment with it and see what you could do. But pain can be entirely debilitating to where you can't move, you can't walk, you can't speak, you can't sign in, you can't do anything. You just can't even stand up. You can just kind of exist and exist in pain and misery. And that's about all you can get your body to do. That's just the body's response to terrible pain is to shut down, curl up and shut down. And you don't, your brain, doesn't have anything to do with it. You know, your intellect has nothing to do with it. You just have to, uh, that's just what happens. Now you can force your way through pain. Okay, I need to take at least five more steps before I die. Well, you can force yourself to take those steps, even though the pain's there, but that's only for a few seconds. And if you practice, you can even make the pain go away with your mind. You can basically turn those nervous system off but you have to practice that first. That's not something you'll learn on the spot. There are people that have organ problems like kidney issues and they're waiting and it may be 10 years before they get a, a kidney. You know, they're on a list to get a, a donated kidney. But meanwhile, they're on dialysis and they're in a lot of pain and they're gonna be that way for a long time. Well, they have two choices, maybe more, but at least two and that is stay drugged up with narcotics and probably become a narcotic addict in the process so that they don't feel the pain, but they're not really all together here either. They're all kind of dreamy and goofy all the time or to live with the pain. Many have learned how to control their pain just with their mind. They learn to turn the pain off. They learn to ignore it just with a very strong intent to not process the pain. And they can do that. So I, I know some people who have had kidney problems. That's why I, I use that example. And that's what they learned to do. They said they didn't want to stay drugged up all the time or become addicts. So they went to a special clinic somewhere and they taught them how to use their intent to decrease the pain. So you can do that. But you don't just do that because, you know, something happens to you and you have this pain like you did. That's not the time to learn this process. <laughs> the time to learn this process, you know, it takes weeks of practice and so on to do it. So it's not something you would do just instantly unless you are capable of, of doing that. instantly. I guess some people would be if they were adept enough at controlling their minds and their bodies. But most people would need some time to work that out. And then they could slowly, probably over weeks and months, learn how to control it with, with their minds. But it, it's hard to do when it just happens to you, particularly if it happens kind of like illnesses happen. You feel a little bad, you feel a little worse, then it gets a little worse yet, and then you know it gets terrible, and then it still gets worse. You don't know what to do about it. You know, you're half you're half panicked over it. Uh, that kind of thing is not a time to learn a new trick. You know, a new trick. <laughs> it's kind of hard to learn in those circumstances, but uh, it is possible to control pain with the mind. But so, what that does takes what, practice? What does that practice consist of? Can you get a bit more specific on, about that? Is it like? Well, just training your attention yeah, or it's training your intention to make the pain go away. So basically you just tell yourself again, it's like uh, you start with your imagination or you can start with a meditation state and you can tell yourself that, you know, the pain is getting less, it's getting less, feel it getting less. And you just have an intent What you're doing is modifying future probability with your intent. And though your intestine is infected, and it's sending out all those pain signals. If you can modify your intent to not receive those pain signals or not to send them, either one, not to send them or not to receive them, then basically 
through the shuffling of probability, you can make it less likely that those neurons will fire and, and give you a pain message. You don't make the pain disappear. You make the, the altogether in your body, you make the pain disappear in your awareness. You become less and less aware of the pain. The pain's still there and you can still sense it. You know, like when you're in a meditation state, you can still hear the traffic outside if you want to. You can hear a bell ring but you're not processing any of it. It's like that. You learn to function without processing the pain. You just shut it off just like you'd shut off the outside world when you go into a meditation state. You let go of it. Now, the thing that'll make it worse is if you don't let go of it. Oh, it hurts. Oh, it hurts. You know, and you focus on it, you make it worse. You just enhance it. That does the opposite thing. That makes the pain get a get a whole lot worse so if you just say well you know it's there i feel it but i'm not going to let it own me i'm going to own me i'm not going to make it you know let it double me up and make me not functionable i'm going to just deal with it i'm not going to feel it i'm going to put it out of my awareness so you're not actually making the pain go away but you you're, you're shoving it out of your awareness to where it's there I feel it. Okay, it's inside there, but it doesn't really bother me. I can walk around. I can smile. I can tell jokes. I can do things with that pain. So that's what they learn. It's just a focus, just the same thing that you would focus in any paranormal thing. You just focus your intention on letting your awareness let go of the pain. It's still there, but you don't pay attention to it. It's one of those things that you you can't check if it's working because if you're checking if the pain is still there, then you're tuning into it, right? Yes. It's like you have to put your attention completely on something else. Right. And, and learn to do that and keep it that way. Yeah. So that's the, that's the key to it. But again, when you're in pain, it's not the time to start the lesson. You know, you, you probably, uh, with people like that, they probably do put them on a drug just so they can listen to the instructor talk to them about what it is they're going to do and then let the drug run out so slowly the pain starts to grow and then let them practice it at you know getting rid of it and if it gets to be too much well they can run back on a drug to lessen the pain and then when the drug wears off they can practice again so over over a couple of months i think you can get better and better and better at it so it's it's the kind of thing you do like that rather than just slammed with pain and then figure it all out on the instant if you were really very good with your <laughs> with your attention and your and your focus and the rest of it maybe you could do it on the spot but most people cannot they have to learn it in the class i and mbt events hope you like this video we will continue to post videos for free on my youtube channel but please understand these videos are expensive to produce. They represent many thousands of hours of production and editing, as well as all the necessary audiovisual equipment, computers, and software. If you find something of significant value in our videos, please consider supporting their production through our Patreon account or through a one-time donation. It would be very much appreciated. The links are in the description below. Thank you.